Good afternoon, folks. Good evening. It's 5 p.m. I think that officially makes it evening. How are we doing? Tonight, we're doing Basics with Babish Live, as you may have grown accustomed to. I'd like to thank everybody who is watching right now instead of watching uh, Taylor Swift, uh, who is live streaming at the exact same time. So whoever's here and hanging out, thank you so much. Um, my name is Andrew Ray, for those of you who don't know, uh, aka uh, Oliver Babish. Uh, and uh, this is one of those occasional live streams that we do where we cook last week's basics with Babish along live with you. So thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out. I'm gonna dip in the screen a little bit, come down and say hi. Uh, I'm a little frumpy today. I didn't shave my head and I, I haven't shaved my cheeks. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little frumpy. I'm gonna try to stay out of camera today so you don't, uh, you don't, you don't get sick. But uh, thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out. We already have a super chat here. Um, we have 4.99 from Judas. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, said uh, bingo with Babish at 10 million subscribers. I'm not entirely sure what that is, but I'm I'm down. If you're talking like straight up bingo, yeah, I think I need to come up with like a really big way to celebrate 10 million subscribers. Um, speaking of which, just hit 5 million subscribers uh, over the weekend. So thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you so much for watching and liking and subscribing and just generally supporting the show and coming out and watching live streams like this. I really appreciate it. And um, <clears throat> I'm very excited to have hit 5 million subscribers. It's a huge milestone. And uh, we have a really cool 5 million subscriber special coming out, uh, not next week, but the following week. Um, I don't wanna say what it is, but we are traveling for it. And we are doing a massive food crawl. I'm talking like, I, I, I don't want to say the number of restaurants either, because that might give it away, but we're going to 50 some odd restaurants uh, in three days, and it's going to be absolutely bananas. Um, so, D Jake, are you seeing uh, 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 people talking about the audio? It seems like everybody's happy. I just saw one person say it's quiet, but it can't be quiet because it's peaking, so I'm, don't, don't increase the levels or nothing. Um, but. Uh, well, speaking of which, uh, I've got uh, my man with the plan in the other room, my dear friend from days of yore, and my business partner, Sawyer Jacob. Sawyer, say hi to the nice people. Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for coming out and supporting us today on the T Taylor Swift uh, live stream. We're hoping to catch some news and tidbits about that. And we also have some general questions that I'm excited to ask uh, in regards to Google Stadia. Yes, Google Stadia, because as we are learning, Google Stadia uh, creates the opportunity and the ability to very quickly and easily get in line to jump in uh, to a game that uh, a person is playing live. So I already pre-ordered my Stadia. It's going to be here in, I think, what did I say, November? That's when they're shipping. Um, so, yeah, so I, I, I plan on uh, being on there, and if you guys want, live streaming as I play video games and uh, you guys have the opportunity to come in and kill me because I'm not very good at, b at video games. We were actually thinking about doing a charity one where every time somebody kills me, um, we donate a dollar to some charity or something like that and see how many times I can be killed, uh, hunted essentially, um, it, over the course of a couple hours or something like that. So if that's something you guys are interested in, um, uh, speak now and, uh, and, and we will listen. Uh, we got a whole bunch of super chats coming in here that I should probably read. Sorry for slacking here. Wow, we got a bunch. Okay, we got some new members too. Welcome, Rhino Ted. Thank you for be joining uh, Binging with Babish memberships. For those of you who don't know, uh, memberships are $5 a month and they give you access to uh, some behind the scenes stuff, some bonus material, and episodes a day early before they go uh, public, before they go live. <clears throat> um, they all want PJ gave $5 and said, uh, I love your videos and you inspire me to try to cook. That's great, that's what I like to hear. That is what we are here to do. We are here to inspire folks to try to cook. Um, let's see, Winton Artemis gave $5 and said, I just wanted to thank you for inspiring me to cook more. I just became an EMT last month and your videos helped me, uh, help keep me sane during my class. That's wonderful, congratulations. And uh, I was a first responder myself. My brother was an EMT back in, high, uh, back in uh, college and uh, big respect for what you guys do. Thank you so much and congratulations on getting your certification. I'm, I'm happy that I, to have helped. $10 from Nestor. Hey Babish, congrats on five million. I love what you did with the region, recent JoJo episode. Thank you. 
Um, any chance that we could see more JoJo recipes, like the food from Tamiya's restaurant, JoJo Part 4? A lot of requests for that. I like to space things out a little bit. I don't want to do, you know, I've done regular show back to back, but that was just because of National Grilled Cheese Day. But for the most part, I like to space things out. You know, I like to make you wait a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, you can definitely expect more foods from JoJo in the, in the future. And thank you very much for your very generous super chat. Uh, the OG Big B gave $5 and said, hey, Andrew, I really like your show. Much better than T-Swizzle. T-Swizzle. Is that another YouTuber that I'm not, that I'm too old to know about? Uh, whoever he is, I'll check him out. Um, I would love to see you cover more desserts and pastries as they are my favorite. Very cool. Got some desserts coming up next week, actually, from a very regular show. That gave it away. That wasn't as sneaky as I thought it was going to be in my head. Randy Petit gave five dollars and said, uh, "You have given me so much more inspiration, and confidence, or so much more confidence to cook." I'm sorry, I read inspiration in the other ones and it bled over. Uh, th th I didn't mean to be so, uh, uh, so so full of myself just then. You have given me so much more confidence to cook. Thank you. That's that's lovely to hear, Randy. Thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you for the kind words. That's very very kind. Uh, Joy Joya Williams gave five dollars and said, "Congrats on five million subs." What is your favorite thing about New York? Everything. It's like it's it, my um, uh, friend of mine asked me, you know, what's my favorite thing about New Orleans? Because I'm going there next week. Um, they were like, "What are you lo looking forward to most?" And I was like, "I can't point to a single thing. I'm looking forward to going to New Orleans." You know, there's no you, New Orleans is kind of like a gr like a muffaletta. It's it's a, it's a something that's greater than the sum of its parts. There's amazing music, there's amazing people, there's amazing food, amazing drinks, amazing architecture, and I wouldn't specifically go to any one of them. It's the amalgamation of everything that makes it such a special place. I think New York's the same way, especially New York, because it's the, you know, the great melting pot. Sierra Gump gave $5 and said, excited to see your book. It comes out on my birthday. Happy early birthday on, on, pub, on my pub date. Thank you. I uh, love your, the show, can't wait for the recipes. Uh, very excited to release the cookbook. And uh, next week I will be announcing, not next week, sorry, um, first week in September I will be announcing book tour dates and locations. I will be doing live um, Q and A's and, and uh, we're, 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 we're just calling it the book tour with Babish, I think, or an even, evening with uh, Benjamin with Babish where um, I'll just be, going on stage and answering questions, maybe doing a little cooking demo, depending on you know, what kind of equipment we can get, and um, just having a great time. And, and uh, books will be included in ticket price, and we'll be going to places like LA and Chicago and um, San Francisco and um, Seattle, Boston, Philadelphia, a whole bunch of places. And uh, we'll be there from the October 22nd to November 1st, I believe. So keep an eye out for that. Tour date's coming in two weeks. Thank you so much uh, for bringing up the book, and thank you for uh, having the birthday on the same day. Andy Norton gave $10 and said, Hey, Babish, the girlfriend and I watch every episode. We learn so much from you. Thank you for everything. Thank you, Andrew. Uh Sorry I said your name wrong the first time. Thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, uh, cooking with your girlfriend, it sounds like, and, uh, and, and keep it up. Thank you guys so much for watching, and thank you for the super chat. Joseph Morris gave five British, uh, yeah, f British, five pounds sterling, British pounds sterling, whatever. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, hi, Andrew. I really enjoy your show. Will it be impossible to buy your new book in the UK? I'm positive you must be able to buy it in the UK. Jake, I don't know. You have to be. You can buy it on Amazon. Yes. So presumably you must be able to buy it in the UK. But I, I'm not sure. I'm not 100%. But what, what, what do you think, Jake? Amazon.co.uk. Oh, oh, I lost your call. I can't hear what you're saying, but uh, are your headphones on, Jake? There we yeah, go. I'm back. Uh, Amazon.co.uk. Okay, Amazon.co.uk. You can get, the, get it there. Uh, Colby Botka gave five, uh, four ninety nine and said, blew my mind to hear you are from Menden. Keep making us proud. Colby from Henrietta. What up, 585? Always nice to hear from a, uh, from a local. Uh, from, from the great uh, cold west, western New York, not upstate New York as some people like to call it, it is western New York, and I uh, always love to hear from the locals. Anybody from Rochester, give us a shout out. Caroline Guarico gave $5 and said, NOLA is my hometown, enjoy your time there. Thank you for the super chat, and yeah, I will. NOLA, uh, New Orleans is my favorite place in the world. I've been there 
four, five, six times now. And Sawyer and I spent the summer there gutting houses after Katrina, and that's when we fell in love with it. Uh, it was really the first time I'd ever done anything like that. We spent uh, most of our summer uh, after our freshman year of college gutting houses, trying to make a documentary, and um, and uh, just just letting the city change our lives. It was it was stupendous. And Sawyer's coming with me, and so is Rashid, because it was the three of us. So it's our big reunion tour going back to New Orleans. Jake, are you excited? Well, I'm excited. I am very excited. We don't get a lot of quality time, just us boys. It's going to be a real special time. Oh, yeah. Um, sorry, I'm just taking a drink here. I'm having a little uh, Ricard. Um, I learned to love Ricard when I was in France. Uh, it's a lovely aperitif. It's kind of like a sweeter absinthe, I think. It's, uh, they're both um, very anise-tasting liqueurs. And they both become very cloudy when diluted with water, which is what you're supposed to do. And it's just a nice way to start off a meal, which is what we're about to do, because we're making carbonara. It's going to be, uh, sorry, uh, squad, it's going to be a, kind of a short stream tonight, uh, just because this dish takes like 20 minutes tops to make. So I'm going to do everything I can to answer as many questions as possible. I see we got more super chats here, so I'm going to burn through these before we get started. At some point, I will stop, though, because we'll be here all night. Uh, but I really appreciate your super chats. Anybody that I'm missing, I'm so sorry. Um, and I, I apologize if I'm, if I'm missing them, but there is a lot, and I'm trying to get through them all. Morgan Margarin gave $10 and said, Hey, Andrew, I love your channel. You've taught me a lot. Question, why are we using dry pasta over fresh in this recipe? Do you have any plans for a clean plate, plate club book? I definitely like, buy that. That's a good idea, a clean plate club book. I like that. I like that. that that's, I feel like I need more recipes because I feel like maybe half of the recipes have been in the Clean Plate Club. And ge generally you want about 100 recipes in a book, which is how many are in the Binging with Babish companion cookbook, first 100 recipes from the show. So I need to get a few more, I think. But uh, I also need to go back through all my episodes and see which ones I inducted in the Clean Plate Club. But that's a great idea. and. Um, uh, why are we using uh, dry pasta over fresh? Just for convenience's sake, we've made fresh pasta a lot on this show, and I'm right, as of right now, I don't have anything new to cheat, teach you. I need a chair or something. This is so uncomfortable. Uh, as of right now, I don't have anything um, new to teach you as far as making fresh, long pasta. And also, you know, I wanted this to taste like um, like a real sort of restaurant carbonara, and and. Um, they're either making pasta fresh using an extruder, which really beats the pasta dough up and, and, and makes it a little chewier. I, I wanted really chewy pasta. I wanted a really al dente pasta. And it's easier to do that. It's easier, easier to achieve that with, with store-bought pasta. I like store-bought pasta. It's got its place. Um, fresh pasta, I think, works better with other dishes because it can be very tender unless you really work it hard, and that takes a lot of effort unless you use a machine. Thank you very much for your super chat. Stuart at large gave $10 and said, when do we get to learn more about you, your new girly girlfriend? Um, I actually invited her to come over and chill tonight, but she couldn't make, well, I, I, she's still at work right now, so I, I, I'm seeing her tomorrow, and we just saw each other last night, so she has cats, she needs to go home and take care of them, um, but I would love for her to come out. Jess, if you're watching, you're welcome to come over. Uh, <laughs> um, I think she might be watching right now, so. Jess, if you are watching, head on over. I, I, uh, w w we can hang out, but I know you got to take care of the cats tonight. Um, but uh, you guys will see more of her soon. She is the one that's inspiring me to uh, make a Lord of the Rings special. So you guys have heard a thank for the Lord of the Rings special that will eventually come, which is going to be a huge episode. So I'm thinking of saving that for six million subscriber, the six million subscriber special, maybe ten million. But you know, that's hoping that I get there. Um, <clears throat> so. Soon is the answer to that. Maurice Bao gave $10 and said, uh, if I or anyone were to challenge you to a cook-off, kind of like Food Wars where two people cook a dish based on a given theme, three judges would taste, would you be up to a challenge? Always up to a challenge. Not, not saying I'm going to win. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, I've never purported to be a real chef or a very, very good chef. I just purport to be a, a decent home cook. And I'd love to take part in any kind of challenge, but uh, I'm not, I'm not going to be like a reality show contestant where I'm like, I'm here to win. Um, <clears throat> I'm also noticing that the color correct is not passing through on the recorders. 
shoot. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm seeing your, I'm seeing the comments about the um, static, and we're trying to look into figuring out what that is, but it static? sounds okay there's, on my end. Yeah. This static on the audio. On your mic, yeah. Hmm. Is it rubbing against my shirt or something? That could be part of it. Yeah. It feels like it's. Uh, I'm getting a call from Brad Cash right now. That's funny. Do you think he's calling about the live stream? I'm going to take it. Should I take it? Yeah. Hey, Brad, how you doing? <laughs> OK, well, just, just so you know, I'm live streaming to about 6,300 people right now. And <laughs> Brad says hello, everybody. Um, and uh, I'll talk to you later. Is that cool? All right, man. No, it's fine. I, I, only, I only picked up to embarrass you. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, dude. I'll talk to you later. OK. Problem solved. <laughs> that was funny. OK. Um, that's the first time I've ever gotten just like a casual call during a live stream. I must not be very popular. M Sketch gave $5 and said, hey, Babish, what's your opinion of some of the more tainted versions of carbonara that chain restaurants sell? Some have peas or bruschetta in them. I mean, at some point, it doesn't really become, at some point, it's not really carbonara anymore. Kind of like how um, grilled cheese isn't really grilled cheese if you put, you know, meat and tomatoes on it. Then you got a, a sandwich with melted cheese on it. I'm not one of those people that says that if you put some caramelized onions on your grilled cheese, you have a melt. I know that's technically what it is, but I'm not going to get mad at you for calling it grilled cheese. But if it's a full-on sandwich and you're still calling it grilled cheese, that's a little silly. A little silly. Um, but uh, yeah, there, there, there comes a point where um, there's a tipping point. And uh, if you're throwing all them kinds of stuff in there, peas and, and, uh, and uh, what was the other thing you said, bruschetta, yeah, it's not really carbonara anymore. It might be tasty, might be a perfectly good pasta, but it's not really carbonara anymore. Um, I think I'm pretty much caught up here. I'm sure I missed some people. I'm very sorry. But I'm going to take that as a sign that it's time to start cooking. So shall we? We shall. Let's do it. Here we go. OK. Just gonna adjust my shirt here. I'm a little, whew. okay. A little sip of my aperitif for those who are just joining us. This is Ricard. Now, the poll that I wanted to take, folks, how should we how should we do this? Um, I'd love for somebody to set up a straw poll. First person that we see to set it up, we will pin it in the comments. How about that? Does that sound good, Jake? So. I'd love for somebody to set up a straw poll right now um, and put it in the comments. And in the first one we see, we'll pin it. And we will, uh, that will be the official, the official poll. And the question is, should we put garlic in this carbonara? Because that is the most contested ingredient. Um, purists and old school Italians say that Garlic has no place in carbonara. It is not in a traditional carbonara. But let's face facts, it's delicious. We're talking about cured pork, eggs, and cheese. Garlic fits right in there. So while it might not make the most traditional carbonara, I want to know, are we making a carbonara with garlic tonight? Yes or no? Somebody set up a straw poll. The first one that we see in the comments, we will pin. That will be the official straw poll. We'll let uh, answers come in for, for a few minutes. And, um, and we will uh, we'll take it from there. Jake, uh, let's keep an eye out here for the first person to post a straw poll. There was no comments. Are you allowed to leave comments? Oh my god. I, I guess people can't leave comments. Never mind, never mind, folks. Um, I, I, why can't people leave comments? That's so strange. OK, all right, well, do you mind? Just go to strawpoll.com and Cool. All right, so never mind everything I just said. Sawyer is going to set up a straw poll to determine whether or not this uh, carbonara gets garlic in it. Um, Son of a pizza man is here, $10. Hey, hey, can I get a shout out? This is probably the most, uh, the, the, the most common things, the thing that happens in these live streams is Son of a pizza man comes around. Gives me a very generous super chat. Asks for a shout out, shout out to Son of a Pizza Man. Thanks for coming and hanging out. Go check out his channel. Uh, thank you very much for the super chat. Um, I'm going to answer a couple more while, while Sawyer's pulling that up. Uh, he's setting up a straw poll for us. Um, Mike 
Benavidez. 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 Mike Benavidez. I'm not very good at pronouncing names. Uh, switch focus a little bit here. Mike Benavidez gave $10 and said, Hey, Babish, can you do a video on kitchen slash pantry storage ideas and organization setups that you have picked up? Love the show. The Kali Ma line from Indiana Jones, what is, you did, is what got me to follow you. I can't even remember what I did that for, the Kali Ma. I remember I was like, Kali Ma, and I pulled something out. And what was it? I can't remember. But thank you. I'm glad that it got you to follow. I'm sorry that I can't remember. Um, the reason that I won't do a pantry or kitchen storage episode is because I am so hellaciously unorganized. If you were to see, and I showed, last time we live streamed, I turned the cameras around and I showed the absolute mess that is my kitchen. It's not dirty, it's messy. There's a very big difference. And um, my pantry is hilarious. It is, it is just like a, a pile of every weird and strange ingredient that I've ever had to get for the show. There's Szechuan peppercorns mashed up next to dried peppers and mashed up next to some, some gypsy, it's called gypsy cold care tea that I got when I had a cold once. That's the name of it. I didn't call it that. I know gypsy is an offensive term, but they're still using it on the uh, tea over there. Some, some dashi broth, some Folgers instant coffee, all the weirdest stuff and the, the strangest mishmash of stuff. And then I just have my spices on one rack. It's about as organized as it gets. I'm the wrong person to turn to when it comes to organization or keeping a uh, tidy kitchen. I think that's one of the more important tenets of the show is um, that what an actual kitchen is like. Now, I'm just seeing in the comments, if you guys check the comments right now, Sawyer has posted a straw poll. Click, it, click on it, it's the only comment in the live stream right now. I'm very confused why there's no comments. Can you check the settings and see like um, why, wow, there's already been uh, 22 votes. Um, can, 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 you can you check the settings and see like wh if pe why people, if people can leave comments? Um, I'm sorry that you guys aren't able to leave comments, something got screwy there, but Sawyer made a straw poll, he posted it in the comments, go check it out. Uh, I'm going to let that go for like five, ten minutes, and then uh, based on the um, <clears throat> results, we will, we will or will not include garlic in this episode. This seems like a fun thing that we should do more often. We, we, we just got to think it through next time. I just thought of it just now, which is why it uh, was a little disorganized. So, <clears throat> uh, first we, thing we need to do is do a little prep, a little mise en place. Um, I've got kind of a raw throat. I'm sorry if uh, sorry if I drop out a little bit here. So why don't we start actually cooking here? That seems like a good idea. I'm gonna get some bowls out the uh, out the old dishwasher here because I need a bowl. <clears throat> and into this bowl, I'm going to grate four ounces of cheese. If we're making one pound of pasta, the rule generally is four ounces of cheese three eggs, one egg yolk, or four, four whole eggs if you want, but the, the <clears throat> or I'm sorry, three whole eggs if, if you want. Extra egg yolk gives it a little bit of richness. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm going to grab my cheese. I got some Parmesan here. Here we go. That's the cheese I'm looking for. Traditionally, I believe the only cheese that goes into uh, that goes into, um, what are we making? Carbonara. <laughs> the only cheese that goes into car uh, carbonara is um, Romano cheese. But we are skirting tradition a little bit because I like having half and half uh, Romano and Parmesan. I think that that makes for, you know, just a little bit more flavor diversity. You get some, you know, the, the Romano cheese, very, very, very sharp, very um, funky and uh, Parmesan brings just a little bit of nuttiness to the party. It just kind of evens it out a little bit. All right, a lot of people talking about static, Jake. Are we okay? Okay. All right. Okay, um, here we go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna scoot it down a little bit. Sorry for the noise, folks. 
You know what, better yet, I'm going to put it right here on my lapel. That can't hit anything. I'm putting it right there. Might not be able to hear me as well. But yeah, Jake, if you wouldn't mind keeping your headphones on and keeping an eye on that, let me know if it's any better. Guys, let me know if the, uh, let me know if the static goes away now because um, I think it was rubbing against my beard or something. I apologize. We definitely lost like 700 viewers from that. We hit, <laughs> sorry folks, it happens. So there's the poll again for, I see people asking about the poll. The poll is in the comments. It is the only pinned comment. Give it a click and uh, let us know. Should there be garlic in this carbonara or not? Should we go full on persnickety old school traditional or should we eschew tradition in favor of flavor? I, wow, that sounds great. That sounds, this should be like my new catchphrase. So we have two ounces of Parmesan grated in, or I'm sorry, two ounces of Romano grated in here. So now I'm gonna grate in an additional two ounces of Parmesan. I'm almost down to the rind on this one, so I need to, I'm gonna need to get the other one. But I like having it really, you'll see that this is like a really, you know, fine microplane. Um, has, uh, a any, any, ha are people talking about the audio quality any better? Uh, people are saying they don't see the poll in the comments. Maybe refresh your page for a second, because yeah, some, yeah, some guys, people are seeing it. The page. Yeah, you got to refresh the page to see the poll. Um, I had to refresh it to see the poll. I am no different. Um, <clears throat> also, let me know if I'm missing any big super chats or interesting questions or anything like that. Uh, but do you have the headphones on? Is the audio sound okay? All right. Is, I, I think I, it was probably just scratching my beard. Story of my life. Welcome to my world. All right, I'm pretty much toast on this on this rind here, which actually I'm going to hang on to because this is very good for putting into soups and stews and sauce as well. If you're ever making a red sauce, you know, uh, a, 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 an Italian tomato sauce, throw a Parmesan rind in there. You're bound for success. Okay. Got another hunk of Parmesan here. This will do the job. And we just got one ounce to go. And I'm going for a grand total here of four ounces of cheese. I should have I, 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 I should have told Jess she should come over and she could have stayed home tomorrow night instead, took care of the cats tomorrow because uh, it would have been fun to have her here tonight. She could have hung out. She could have been my taste tester. We would have had to figure out an additional mic though, which would have been just a nightmare. Okay, I'm at 3.7. Ew. Nat, got a gnat. Get out of here, gnat. Oh boy, after the spider fiasco last week, people are going to freak out. We didn't actually have a spider. Somebody told me that there was a spider on the bottom of my bowl, and it scared me the rest of the night because I'm scared of spiders. So that wasn't very nice. Okay. No pole and static. The people are still saying static, dude. I think we're getting uh, interference on this mic. Are you listening to the actual live stream? All right, guys. Uh, Jake's going to take a listen to the to the live stream and uh, see if there's uh, static or, you know, if it's peaking or something like that. Just let me know. We can always swap out the mic pack. There's another mic pack in there. Um, it sounds fine. Okay, I, I, I can't hear you, dude. I think I lost you. No, I'm back. I'm back. I just muted okay. you so uh, you wouldn't hear yourself. And it sounded fine. It sounded as smooth as eggs. People might be okay. having a little fun, actually. Okay, guys. I love to have fun as much as the next guy. <laughs> but static isn't a laughing matter. Static affects millions of families every year. Okay, so now we got four ounces of cheese here, looking beautiful, wonderful. All right. Oh, wow, we have a $50 super chat. I'm going to touch on that real quick. Um, uh, w well, well to lid. 
well to lid one two three gave fifty dollar super chat extremely generous thank you so much saying no question actually working overtime tonight been loving the show since discovering you cooking Hannibal's thigh uh, if you're ever in the Bay Ridge in Brooklyn you'd be welcome to bourbon my bourbon anytime I'll take you up on that thank you so much for the extremely generous super chat um, well to lid one two three uh, I, I'm sorry to hear you're working overtime. I know that's rough, and uh, let's keep it up. I'm happy to be keeping you company, and thank you so much. That's an extremely generous super chat. Speaking of which, we got $20 from Joe Loden, uh, who said uh, some good, good ingredient money. <laughs> thank you so much. As you can see, I'm using very good ingredients. I love these eggs here. I'm not sponsored. I just love them. Al fresco, pasture-raised eggs. And why do I love them? Because, well, I'll tell you, they have, of any commercially available eggs I've ever seen, the most orange yolks I've I, I, um, I've seen in just like supermarket eggs. They're always nice brown shells and they're always nice deep orange yolks, which is exactly what I'm looking for in an egg. I'm gonna crack all these with one hand just to be impressive. Look at that, somebody's a pro. And I'm going to also separate one egg we need some egg whites. Oh, I feel so stupid that I forgot to do the color correct. Maybe we should take a break in a second. I'll do like a quote unquote bathroom break while I uh, fix the color on the cameras because it would be like a 30 second fix. We might lose some viewers, but um, I'd hate for people to not be able to see this in, in true living color instead of the washed out. Because we shoot the show very flat. We shoot it uh, with what's called um, S-Log 3 color, uh, 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 color gamut, and it's, uh, it's very flat, which gives the, data, the picture more color data that we can use in post to, to, to um, better color correct the image. And I forgot to turn it off, which is why it looks kind of washed out and gray right now. So I'm going to get this egg slurry going, and then I think we'll take like a 30 second break so I can fix the cameras. Let me just... Um, it's so funny. Before we started, I literally said to Sawyer, I was like, we're getting good at this. And <laughs> we got static, we got bad color, we don't know how to make a pole. What a, what a fiasco. All right, I'm, speaking of which, I'm going to check that pole real quick. Um, oh my god, we have, oh look who's back, dude, $100 from In-N-Out. In-N-Out comes here every time and gives the most massive super chats. Thank you, In-N-Out. Uh, can you show us how to make <laughs> hamburger from Eddie Murphy's Raw? He's back every live stream. This guy gives $100 to ask me to make the hamburger from Eddie Murphy's Raw. Yes, you know what, dude? You've convinced me. I remember the bit exactly because I used to watch that bit. I watch things obsessively and repeatedly. I, I can't stop. Like, I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, I'm a serial rewatcher. I love rewatching things because. In my mind, movies and TV shows are like music. You wouldn't listen to a song one time. So I've, I've watched that special probably 10 times because uh, it was on Comedy Central when I was a kid and I, I recorded it on my VHS. None of you kids would know what that means. And, um, and uh, I recorded it and I couldn't stop watching it. And I remember that bit like word for word, practically his, the voice that he makes when he's pretending to be a child. Um, and okay, man, you've convinced me. 100 bucks, thank you so much for an extremely generous super chat. We got another very generous one from BC Cataloni. Afternoon, Babish, I am from Massachusetts and have been watching you for eons now. I admire your creativity, the process of making the food, everything. I think it'd be amazing if you took on something from Willy Wonka, God bless. Dude, thank you so much for the extremely generous $50 super chat, DC Cataloni, and uh, that is a very good idea. I've had requests for stuff from um, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory for a long time. I'm, I'm a little wary of it because it is fantasy food and I, I get nervous about fantasy food. I like to try to be as accurate as possible in recreating stuff, but there's gotta be something in there that's, that's, that's doable. And it seems like it'd be a really great opportunity to pair with like a science channel or something like that to do a crossover episode uh, because then we could, um, <coughs> we could uh, you know, try to figure out a scientific way to achieve some of those crazy things. So just to catch you guys up on what I'm doing here, I, com I combined um, three eggs and one egg yolk beaten together 
added it to four ounces of finely grated Romano and Parmesan cheese. Uh, and that is going to make our sort of egg cheese slurry. It looks pretty nasty, but once we, um, once we let the heat of the, the residual heat of the pasta cook it, uh, it's going to become super creamy and l luxuriant and wonderful. The last thing that we have to add to this is many, many healthy twists of freshly ground, very important, freshly ground black pepper. There is no, there are very few, I should say, very few applications where fresh ground is not better than pre-ground pepper. There is, it, you can smell it, when you grind it, you can smell how much brighter and sort of more floral the pepper, pepper, is, the pepper, the pepper smells as you grind it and the flavor is going to be. And in carbonara, you want a lot of pepper. You want, you want it to have, be almost a little spicy from all the pepper that you're putting in it. Any carbonara you ever have is like just loaded, dotted with pepper. So I'm just getting that in there. That's just gonna make our life a little bit easier down the line when the, when the pasta is done. Uh, the only reason we're not adding salt is because um, guanciale, or in this case today, because I couldn't find any pancetta, is pretty salty. And we want that to salt the dish on its own first. See how that goes. And what's up? Okay, all right, guys, you know what? We're gonna take a, we're gonna take a quick break. Jake, tell them we're gonna take a quick break in case they can't hear me. Yeah, we're gonna take a quick break. First and foremost, I never thought you were lying to me. I just was a little skeptical of how bad the problem was. But I just listened for a very long time, and the problem is bad. I now recognize that, thank you very much. I don't think it's his beard, because it sounds very technical, but it's we're going to, it's too far from the beard. It can't be the beard. And okay. it does seem so to be related to motion, but we're going to take a quick break and we're going to try mic. some stuff. Yeah. All right, guys, we'll be right back. Okay, we'll be right back. Sorry about that.
Okay, guys, what do we think here? We're back. We got a fresh mic pack on me. Jake, how the levels look? Okay, a little low. All right, we should we crank them up in the software? Sorry, folks, technical difficulties. Just two of us here tonight. We forgot that tonight was a live stream evening, and we kind of just jumped right back into it. Sorry, folks. Welcome back. Sorry we lost you there. Do let us know if it sounds, uh, sounds any better here. They're saying it's quiet. Yeah, everybody's saying the volume's way low. Wait, no, no, hang on, hang on. I'll do it on the pack. Okay, here we go. How about now? It's probably going to be too loud. Okay, it's oh, yeah, it's peeking out on my end. All right, I'm just gonna, gonna put it there. Test, test, test. Oh boy, you'd think we'd know what we're doing by now. Okay, how we doing? Better? Too low, can't hear you. All right, man, we're bad at this. All right, good, I'm getting lots of goods. Okay, all right, all right. I'm also we are back. Just, all right, we're back, folks. Here we go. And I'm just remembering we also need to get water boiling. So as long as we're you know, in the middle of the excitement here, why don't we move on over to camera two? Jake, you ready for a camera switch? Let's. And we're over here now. Welcome to the first ever multi-camera live stream on YouTube. I'm just kidding. I don't think that's true. Uh, what I do need is a pasta pot right now. So I've got one right here. And I need to fill it with water, which is going to take about 10 years with my sink. So I'm just going to drop it in the sink over here. Sorry, I'll pardon all the noise. And I'm just going to get that going. There it goes. That's going to take a little while. So we're going to let that go for a minute. Whew, perilous, my goodness. <laughs> that a lot of people are saying that it's quiet. Um, I'm starting to wonder. If, I'm starting to wonder if it's the receiver. Um, it's too, okay. Well, we don't know who's messing with us now at this point. Um, I tend to believe, you know, a lot of people are saying that it's that it's too quiet. Um, but yeah? All right, is it up in the yellow or where is it? That's why, that's why. Okay, hang on. I'm, I'm going to come in real super quick. Sorry, folks. Be right back. There it is. This is, set. This is turned way down. All right, that should fix it. There test, test. Okay, I think we're, I think we're back in business here. I'm, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed, but I think we're back in business. How, what do we think, folks? That's it? That's probably it. I'm willing to bet that's it. I'm, 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 I'm keeping an eye on those comments because it, there's like a, probably about a 30-second delay. And good, good, poop, noise, better, better, all goods. Yes, that's perfect. Yay, okay. We're back in business. Thank God. I'm very sorry, folks. Sorry about that. We are not live streamers by trade. We are YouTubers by trade. <laughs> so we should learn a little bit more about live stream before we, can, before we uh, try to do this again. I have the slowest sync in the whole of human history, by the way, just so you know. So uh, while that's going, because it's going to take probably another three, four minutes to, to fill up properly, uh, how do, let's take a look at the uh, straw poll, shall we? What, what are we looking at um, results-wise? We have, uh, oh my God, we're almost deadlocked here. And, mo and the majority, the 52% majority say no. I've never seen such a close call in my entire life. Um, well, folks, I think that that means that we gotta do no garlic. This is a democracy. And uh, I did put it to you, the people, as to whether or not garlic should go in here. 
I'm going to give you one last chance. Um, if you want or do not want garlic to be in this dish, please vote in the straw poll in the comments. If you don't see it, try refreshing the page. It was, uh, it was commented while this live stream was going, so you can't see new comments. So refresh the page, see if you see it, vote. I'm going to give it two more minutes, and then we are making a final decision from there. Um, I'm going to also head over to my organized pots and pans rack and grab a high-walled saute pan. This is the, probably the best vessel for us to finish our pasta in because we want it to have the ability to toss it. We want to have the ability to really beat it around and stir it. And um, this is going to give us that ability because of the high walls. So we're going to use this as our primary cooking vessel. And then out of the fridge, I'm going to grab the pancetta. Now, it occurs to me trying to make a pound of pasta here, and I don't think I got enough pancetta. A lot of recipes call for four ounces. Again, the traditional thing to use is guanciale, um, but uh, uh, the, the, the traditional thing to use is guanciale over pancetta, but pancetta is an acceptable substitute. Guanciale is very hard to find. Uh, it's cured pork jowl, and this is just cured pork belly uh, in the same, almost the same fashion, I think. Um, and the flavor is very close, um, but it's a perfectly acceptable substitute. It's way more readily available than uh, guanciale. And I didn't get enough, I don't think. So I have this pancetta left over from the weekend um, uh, uh, when I made uh, carbonara for my father and my brother. Uh, and I like this one better because it's, I don't know if you can see, but it's in nice big chunks. And that's really what you want with carbonara. And this one's in tiny, tiny little, little, little stupid chunks. See that? And uh, that's, that's not ideal. So ideally, we want to do this. Oh, all right. We've got enough water in the pasta pot. Here we go. Oh, let's head over to the stovetop, Jake, where I'm going to place this pot covered over high heat. Get this water boiling. I'm also going to add a healthy sprinkle of kosher salt. I mean, you can add any kind of salt, really, but kosher is what I have. And I'm just adding a whole bunch. We want uh, this to be as salty as the sea, as the Italians say. And I know I said the phrase that uh, the, the Italian version of that phrase in the video, but that's because I looked it up and I don't remember specifically what it is right now. So I can't recite it, but I can say carbonara in a very Italian way. Garbonara. 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 Okay. Let's head back over here where we're going to, we have another super chat from In-N-Out. Another $100 super chat. This must be the actual In-N-Out because this guy burns money like, like I've never seen. Uh, can you show us how to make something from Mind of a Serial Killer, The Life and Times of Jeffrey Dahmer? My goodness. And he's got a sense of humor. Um, <laughs> thank you very much for the extremely generous super chat. That's a lot of money to tell me to eat people. Um, and I appreciate that. Uh, I'm not going to do it, but I do appreciate your, your super chat and your, as usual, incredible generosity. This guy comes to all the live streams and just drops hundos. Um, thank you so much for coming out, man. Uh, Cyber Ostrich gave $10 and said, here's a contribution for some new mic packs. That's funny. Sorry. Sorry about that, guys. I'm glad that the audio's good now. Got one guy still saying it's too quiet, but I think we're, I think we're good. Um, John I just checked Barrett, the straw poll. Sorry to interrupt. 112 yeah. votes yes, 112 votes no. Guys, we're deadlocked here. Please go into the, uh, the straw poll in the comments. If you don't see it, refresh the page. Uh, go in there, vote, because we are deadlocked. And I will, I'm going to set a timer. I'm going to set a timer for two minutes. And I can't set a timer on my phone because then it messes up my, my call with Sawyer. So I'm going to, how do I not have a timer in this kitchen? Are you crazy? Um, that's, that's insane. And I don't, have, like my, I don't have my chronograph on right now. I don't have my, <laughs> I don't have my Daytona on right now, so I can't, uh, I can't All right, I'll, I'll take the time timer. with that. All right, you set a timer. Jake's going to set a timer for two minutes. And whatever is the majority of two minutes is going to be what I'm going to do. So come one, all right. come all started. Thank you. Now, it's going to open this guy up here. 
And I'm going to wait for the water to boil before I cook anything, just because it's best to just have your pasta water boiling. Nothing's worse than having like your sauce finished or whatever, um, and you're still waiting for your water to boil. Mmm, that smells nice uh, <laughs> for raw cured pork. Um, so I like to just get the water boiling first. Once the water's boiling, then we work. Um, and uh, we have our, for those of you who are just joining us, we have our egg and cheese slurry here. This is three eggs with one egg yolk beaten together and then added to four ounces of very, very finely shredded uh, uh, Romano and Parmesan cheese, two ounces of each. And then we added a whole bunch of freshly ground black pepper, tons of it. You can see that it's like bespeckled there because there's so much uh, uh, pepper in it. So now, uh, what else we got to do here? Let's, let's take a look at some super chats because we're waiting on the water to boil. Uh, Rick Lewis gave $15 and said, can you make the chili from Drake and Josh? I, I assume that you're uh, referring to the Peruvian puff pepper chili, which um, I will definitely look into. The last, oh, I, wait, did I ever make anything from Drake and Josh? No, I made something from iCarly. I don't think I made anything from Drake and Josh, but the, the, so I, I definitely need to look into that. Thank you very much for your super chat. Bella Diaries gave $10 and said, do not like me, me, do not let me, people make you feel bad about the audio. We're here because we love you as a person. That's very, very sweet, Bella. Thank you. But uh, yeah, I, we obviously want to have the best audio possible for the show. We care about production quality and uh, we are sorry for, um, for that little mishap that was just a mistake with the uh, bad audio pack there. Hop Wallace gave ten dollars and said, "Where are the best place to get? Uh, where's the best place to get a garbage plate in Rochester, New York?" Um, my vote is going to be where I grew, what I grew up with, which is P Hots. Jake, is that also your vote? P Hots all the way, baby. P Hots. I personally go White Hots. I think Jake, you go cheeseburgers. You know me all too well, and that's the Penfield <laughs> Hots for the unordained. Yes, the unordained. Uh, the 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 uh, the. Um, the, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Oh boy, I don't have the best words tonight. Um, for, for those of you who are uninitiated, uh, P. Hots is Penfield Hots. Sawyer himself grew up in Penfield. Um, so uh, he has that built-in loyalty. And me, that's where I had my first garbage plate. So I, I have to go with that. And me personally, I like a white hot there, uh, which is Zweigel's um, veal and pork based hot dog which is it's a white hot dog and uh, they sear the hell out of it they put a nice dark cr crispy skin on it and then they slice it in half and fry it you know open open dog style <clears throat> which is my favorite way to eat a hot dog but that's where to get it all Check right it you out. want the results yes two minutes are up two minutes are up okay. with 142 votes and 43 percent no with 181 votes, 56%, yes, it's garlic. From behind, from, from way behind, from, uh, well, I guess from 48%, it now has a whopping, what would you say, 57%? 56%, a massive uh, upset. Uh, garlic takes the day. We are going to put garlic in this. Sorry for any purists out there that are going to be upset. But uh, you know what? I love garlic in, uh, in my carbonara, so I'm going to put it in there happily. So that means we have another piece of uh, prep to do before we head over to the stovetop, which is joyous news to me because this water is taking its sweet time boiling. So I'm going to grab a uh, head of garlic here. And for those of you who are just joining us or missed the drama, uh, I was I was polling I was positing to you the YouTube audience uh, do we put garlic in this carbonara do we eschew tradition do we skirt uh, uh, the, 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 the old world way of doing things and do we put garlic in our carbonara and you know what if if this makes it no longer a carbonara so be it this is what we're making we're making pasta with an egg sauce with pancetta and garlic, man, and, and a, a whole lot of Romano and Parmesan cheese, because guess what? It's delicious. There's no if or ands or buts about that, and there is no denying it. You might say that it's not real carbonara, but you can't look me in the eye and tell me it's not tasty. So, you know, I'm not even going to chop this up because uh, uh, I like, I, I don't want big chunks of garlic in there, so I'm going to, I'm going to crush it. 
I'm gonna crush it right in there. Uh oh, unless I can't find my garlic crusher, in which case we might be making crushed dry. Oh, no, here it is. Here it is. Got it. All right, that's fun. We are going to piss some people off. That's always fun. Um, I'm waiting on the water to boil, so I'm gonna pour myself another drink, if nobody minds. Um, there's the Ricard. I'm gonna show you about uh, this, 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 this lovely drink, Ricard. It's very cool. Uh, it's kind of like absinthe. In fact, it's very like absinthe. It's very, very similar. And I stole this off of uh, Vinny's desk. Vinny, if you're watching, I'm sorry. I, was, I, I wanted some and, and I, I stole it off your desk. I apologize. Uh, I'll get you another bottle. Um, and what you do, start with a little bit of ice in the glass here. And then uh, put a nice, you, you don't have to do ice, but at the very least you need ice water. And you see that this, that this clear green liquid turns very cloudy. It turns uh, like light green and cloudy. It's something indicative of absinthe and, uh, and Ricard and other, uh, um, other uh, st the, the, the star anise based, I don't know if that's what it's actually made of, just what it tastes like a star anise, these uh, liqueurs. And then what you do is you add a little bit of cold water, which I don't have, but there's plenty of ice in there. So I'm just going to gently drizzle a little bit of this in here, which is just gonna up the cloud factor, make it nice and light and cloudy. And it's the perfect aperitif. It's a great way to, to um, get ready for a meal, which is what we're doing. We're getting ready for a meal here. We got a big pasta dinner coming. Mm. Oh, it's good. It's so sweet. Jake, if you need a refill, come on in anytime. Uh, we got 20 euros from Rutgers, Rutgers Emp 01. Uncle Buck video was the greatest thing I've seen in a long time. Here's a bunch of money to do more of it. Thank you so much for, for the, that's both very kind words and very encouraging uh, contribution. I really appreciate that. And um, yeah, we never really thought that was going to happen. We knew that we were going to have to employ some serious uh, fabrication and some, I don't mean fabrication as in lying, I mean like building of things to make the Uncle Buck pancake because the situation that he made him with was just so impossible, like just taking a sheet of metal and putting it on top of a four burner stove, you'd have a very uneven pancake. It would stick to it for sure. And also if, if you watch that clip again, if you watch the clip from Uncle Buck, you'll see that the snow shovel is like flat. Like you can't find a snow shovel like that. That was purpose built for that movie. Because uh, all snow shovels have these ridges in them or uh, divots or whatever. And uh, uh, they, th that kind of snow shovel just doesn't exist. So we knew at the very least we were going to have to build some kind of custom sn snow shovel. And uh, then we got talking with Autodesk and they were like, why don't we have a robot do it? And we were like, mm -hmm, okay. Um, and uh, then at that point we didn't even care about trying to do it with, uh, with, a, uh, with some custom shovel. We were just like, let's have a robot do it. That's way cooler. And uh, so that's what we did. And it was a lot of fun. And the people out there, Autodesk, amazing company. I have kind of a history with them because I used to do visual effects using their software. And uh, then America's Test Kitchen is also out there. And they also helped us out with it. And um, ooh, a little bit of dried garlic in there, gross. Um, they helped us out with it. And uh, they taught me how to cook, really. <laughs> Dan Souza was like the, the coolest Chef it still is like coolest chef in the world to me, and uh, it was very cool to work with him. It's always very a lot of fun to work with him. He's a really nice guy, um, very handsome guy. Um, anyway, thank you for your contribution and thank you for the kind words. Chef Rin gave ten dollars and said you were one of my favorite YouTubers. Love the show. Keep on keeping on. Thank you. That's very very kind and thank you for the contribution. Thank you. So th thank you for very generous uh, super chat and for the kind words. Insulin Crow gave $20 and said, looking good, Babby. It's been a cold, rainy day for me, so the stream is already cheering me up. How's the Hot Ones tattoo doing? Well, let's take a look, shall we? It's so thin that it's like falling off. I didn't take good care of it. I didn't do good aftercare. It's not Chris's fault. Uh, Chris, Chris is the tattoo artist. She did beautiful work, but I didn't like moisturize it and clean it and keep, and keep it happy. So it's like... I'm flexing because my arm's on camera, but you can see it's like, it's like almost fall, it's like almost gone because it was so thin to begin with that it's like, 
it's like half fallen off. I need to get it touched up. Um, very proud of that tattoo. My brother uh, visited and he was like, so what are you gonna cover that up with? And I was like, uh, nothing. <laughs> That's one of the most proudest tattoos I own. Um, thank you very much for the super chat. Thank you for the kind words. I love cold rainy days. I don't know where you are in the world there, where it's cold and rainy, but I wish I was there because I do love them. And the air conditioning's not working in this room and it is hot. Uh, can you make lobster a la Tudeschi from the movie The Whole Ten Yards? That has got to be the most obscure reference I've ever heard. The Whole Ten Yards, the sequel to The Whole Nine Yards, starring Bruce Willis and Matt Perry? That, <laughs> that's got to be the most specific and extreme reference to any movie I've ever heard. That's, that, 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 that's such a deep cut. I'm so impressed by it. Um, I've never seen it, but I will, I will check that out. Uh, thank you very much for the super chat. I love watching your videos. I've been hooked since the Rat Ratatouille episode. Thank you so much for the kind words, for the suggestion, and for the super chat, Lizette Nicholson. I appreciate it. Uh, Marcus West, Marcus Worst, Worstching uh, gave $10 and said, I just wanted to say I've, been, I've seen every single one of your videos, and you're by far the best YouTube cook. Uh, and wanted to see if you do Doctor Who foods. I am not that familiar with Doctor Who foods. I've been seeing a lot of requests for fish fingers with custard, which sounds pretty gross. So I'm trying to figure out savory custards and what I can do there, but I am looking into it, and you can't expect a Doctor Who uh, episode one day. Uh, it's too big and too important of a show for me to, uh, for me to ignore it. Uh, Javari Williams gave $20 and said, love seeing your copycat re recipes for, uh, and your better version recipes. You should do a Nashville hot chicken episode with a traditional take, a more tame, uh, sweeter take like KFC's version and a copycat of Panda Express version. Definitely a good idea. Um, uh, for those of you who know who Jess is, uh, my girlfriend, uh, she, that is her favorite food is Nashville hot chicken. So I will definitely be looking into that because I'm trying to be a good boyfriend. Derek Arden gave $10 and said, Babish is a god. Thanks, bro. bro. That means a lot coming from a Green Lantern. Um, and uh, thank you, Javari Williams, again, for your very generous super chat. Thank you, PH Denver, Denver for a $20 super chat. He says, thanks for upping my steak game with that wine reduction fawn sauce. Nice, dude. I'm glad that you like it. Um, nothing's better than upping one's steak game. It really, uh, it really excites you to try new things and, and uh, sort of branch out a little bit. Um, I'm going to check in the water real quick. I don't think we're boiling yet, but I'm just going to peek at it, see where we're at. We're getting a little bubbly. These are pretty powerful burners, but they can only do so much with that amount of water. Like it take, it's gonna take time to get that up to a boil. We have all of our mise on plus. Uh, I would do a poll for this one, but it's stupid, so I, no. Um, I got two different kinds of pasta here. I got spaghetti and I got spaghetti rigatti, which is a ridged spaghetti, um, which is good for like catching sauce. Like, it, you know, it's the reason I like uh, pasta, normally uh, pasta cut with bronze dyes because it makes it all kind of rough, um, gives the pasta, pasta a very rough texture up close. If you look at it under a, under a magnifying glass, it's very like craggly almost. And that helps it cling to sauce. And Berea, while a perfectly acceptable, um, I mean, it's okay. As far as, as far as like grocery store pa pasta brands, this is probably your top of the, your top of the pack. Um, I personally, my favorite uh, that's widely available is Dikeko. I couldn't get it, so that's why I'm working with Berea Bar right now. Um, but uh, I'm wondering if I should do this spaghetti rigate, 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 whatever. Uh, my only concern is that it actually looks thinner than the normal spaghetti. I can't quite tell. Jake, what do you, you know, we're not gonna do a poll for this one. Jake, which one do you think I should do? Ridge spaghetti or normal? Ridged, please. Done. Sold. Bought and sold. Ah, uh, we got 7,500 people coming out and, check, and hanging out. Thank you guys so much for coming out despite um, Taylor Swift uh, live streaming at the same time right now. I wouldn't be surprised if that number just dropped like 400 people just from me saying that. Like, oh God, Taylor's live streaming? Um, but uh, uh, it's very nice of you guys to come hang out. Uh, we're just making pasta, chilling, answering some questions. Love in Rochester as usual. 
Um, we got some super chats I can touch on here. Retro Rafe X13 gave five dollars and said, "Hey, Babish, the butcher shop didn't have jowl, so I got belly instead. I want to know if it's uh, normal for the chunks to be gray. If not, what can I do? I would stay away from gray pork. Um, beef can turn gray because it oxidizes, but gray pork, I don't, I don't, I don't like the sound of that. If you got it from a good butcher, it might just be oxidized. I could be wrong, but." You know, you know, give it the smell test. If it smells sour, if it smells off in any way, good, gone. But that being said, for carbonara, you probably don't want to do, um, you probably don't want to do just straight up belly. You want something that's been cured. Uh, pancetta, guanciale, even bacon, it's all cured and it all has that cured bacon, uh, 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 sort of, you know, pork belly taste. Um, straight up pork belly, you're not going to get as much flavor in your carbonara. It's not going to have the right flavor to it. So if you can, I would go back and try to get some pancetta or some guanciale or some even just some like some some thick cut bacon. Like if in a pinch, that will work. You know, that'll make Italians weep bitter tears, but it will also taste great. Uh, straight up belly, I wouldn't trust, especially if it's gray. That doesn't sound awesome. But if it's a busher you trust, and if you know it's fresh, if it doesn't smell bad, it might be okay. But smell it. See if it smells okay. Um, bad Dire Wolf gave 10 pounds sterling and said, I only found your channel three weeks ago, but I've watched every episode whilst doing my own cooking. Thanks for relighting my passion for food. I've been a bit down, and your shows really helped me out. That's really lovely to hear, Bad Dire Wolf. Thank you so much, not only for your generous super chat, but also very, very kind words, ones that I absolutely love to hear because cooking really pulled me out of a funk too. I, I, I was, you know, I talk about it in my book coming out soon, but like uh, I was pretty deeply depressed. Um, I was in a bad relationship and I was, I was just in a bad place and making the show and cooking really pulled me out of it and cooking can have a, a really therapeutic transformative power. But um, keep cooking and you know, I'll say to you what I say to everybody else, which is if you need help, seek it out, please. Um, but it sounds like you were just in a rut and I'm happy to have helped in any way. Thank you so much for your super chat. Sasha, can't pronounce that last name, Sasha Lyubashevsky. Lyubashevsky. Sasha Lyubashevsky. Uh, thank you for inspiring me to cook. Can you do an episode slash live stream on creating your own recipes? I mean, I do try to create my own recipes as much as possible. I know that I uh, borrow recipes from America's Test Kitchen and Serious Eats and stuff like that and J. Kenji Lopez all, but um, I, 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 I have created a bunch of recipes. It is, I will say it's very hard to come up with just totally new recipes. I am not large enough of mind or talented enough in the kitchen to just like totally come up, with, I, I've come up with a couple, I have a couple. That would be fun to do like a basics on the few recipes that I've actually come up with myself. All right, maybe we'll do, we'll do that. B the basics on Babish's original recipes. I can see the water's boiling now, so we can head over to the stove top. Get this guy off, there we go. That sounded weird. Uh, take off the lid and we're ready to get cooking here. So into a cold pan, because I like to cook this as gently as possible into a cold pan, I'm dumping my pancetta, and it's definitely not enough. But the other pancetta that I have is very, very small. So I'm gonna start cooking this a little bit. Maybe for like, uh, maybe for like three minutes or so. Just, just get some of the fat rendered out, get it starting to crisp up a little bit, and then I'm gonna add the other pancetta and let that cook the rest of the way so that it's evenly cooked. Because you don't wanna get your, your pancetta fully crisp. You want it to be like, um, I guess the closest equivalent would be medium cooked bacon where it's not shatteringly crisp, but it's not floppy either. It's just like, it's got a nice chew to it. It's, it's al dente, if you will, uh, toothsome. And uh, that's, that's where we want our pancetta to be. I'm gonna grab a wooden spoon back here or a wooden spatula, whatever you call this, flat footed spoon. Who else watches Steve 1989 MRE Info? I'm sure you do. It's one of my favorite shows. But he loves spoons and he loves MRE spoons and and uh, well, he just loves MREs. But um, 
anybody knows him, tell him to hit me up. I'm trying to get a hold of him. I want to do I want to do some kind of crossover collab. Him and, him and Doug DeMuro, my YouTube heroes, or my many YouTube heroes, I should clarify. But I love them because they're examples of um, people that are. Sorry, this one of my one of my beard hairs went <laughs> went stray. That happens. I think it was an eyelash actually. Uh, my beard is, is is pretty stuck to my face. It's not really going anywhere. Uh, one, one thing that makes a YouTube hero for me is somebody who did it entirely themselves and does it about something they're so passionate about and so knowledgeable and crazy about that they have to, they have to find a, a way to tell the world. And that's what Doug DeMuro and Steve1989 and Murray Info are, are people who just are so crazy about what they're doing that they had to tell somebody about it. They had to share it. And uh, I, I love that about them. Um, and that's something that's very uniquely YouTube. You could never make a show about a hands-only show, taste testing MREs, uh, military meals ready to eat, um, and expect it to get any kind of viewership on any kind of television network. But now my man pulls down millions of views on the regular, and it's all thanks to YouTube, man. YouTube is a magical place where people can really share their unique personalities, their knowledge, and listen to me, Car get just carrying on like, a, like an old man. Um, I'm going to now add the rest of this pancetta. There we go, let me just, I mean, I, I just got this, it's getting a little smoky, so I'm gonna turn it down. I just got this last weekend, I'm just, Making sure it's good. Yep, we're good. It's only a couple days old, so it's fine. There we go. So we got a little bit of fat coming out of the bigger pieces. Now, guys, just so you know, when I'm over in the stove like this, I can't see the monitor, so I can't see your questions and comments and whatnot. We've had some confusion in the, in the past about that, so I just want you to be aware that uh, we're in a bit of a a holding pattern. Unless, uh, Jake, if you have any, any cool questions or comments that needs to be addressed, I am all ears. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we referenced the guy that gave you 50 bucks to buy a bottle of bourbon. We really appreciate oh. that. Um, Didn't see that one, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, Thank you very much for your... Back. Thank you very much for a very generous super chat. I will use that specifically for a bottle of bourbon. You must not be very happy seeing me drink uh, Ricard, huh? Must be that. Yeah, John Barrett, a professional who loves your kitchen setup and is buying us a bottle of bourbon. Much appreciated, my brother. Thank you very much, John Barrett. That was very kind, and we really do appreciate it. Um, and what I'm doing over here is just trying to get a little bit of crisp on my pancetta. I don't want too much, and I definitely started it too hot because you can see the, that there's fat sticking to the bottom of the pot, and we don't want that for once. Normally, we want that, you know, to make fond. We want uh, stuff to stick to the bottom of the pot, but not in this case. In this case, it's actually not doing us much good. So, got a good question for you here. Um, Ava Morales gave five pounds. Thanks so much. Uh, did you come across any issues after literally swallowing sex shop candle wax on hot ones? How are your insides feeling, my guy? <laughs> That's a good question because I, Sawyer will tell you that I was immobile for a solid 15 minutes after shooting hot ones. Like we were in the I green room and I was like, I was like, guys, I can't stand up. Like, I, you know, I, 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 I had a splitting pain in my stomach. And we will never know if that pain was from the hot wings or if it was from a glob of wax sitting in my stomach. Because as soon as it, that candle, as soon as the wax hit my tongue, it dissolved and just disappeared. I thought it was going to stick to my tongue and coat it the way it did in the cartoon. Weird how life doesn't work like cartoons like that. And I, and I was surprised to find that it just literally just dissolved and went straight down my throat. So. I wish you guys could smell this. It smells so good. Something about cured uh, pork when it when it starts really 
rendering out all that fat. It's got this like, the smell of curing is very unique. It's, 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 it's herbaceous and sour and it's, it's, it's very special. And that's what makes carbonara so special because it takes a little bit of love and care and know-how to make. And this is gonna be, you know, I, I'm very curious to see how this is gonna turn out with the big and little pieces of pancetta. We got big ones, we got little ones. The little ones are getting nice and crispy here because they're so small. The big ones are just starting to get crispy, so we're gonna have a lot of textural difference in there, and I'm, I'm thinking that's gonna be, it's gonna be real nice. I think we're in for a real nice meal here, Jake. Mm. But um, yeah, I, uh, as far as the sex shop candle, um, I don't think it did any permanent damage, but again, time will tell. Um, I don't know what, what afflicted me so. When I was in the green room, it was horrible. It was far and away the worst stomach pain I've ever felt. And I guess I've never gone through any real stomach trauma or anything like that. I've never had my appendix out or anything like that. I know it's not in your stomach, but you know what I mean, it's a stomach pain. Um, but I, uh, I, oh, okay, here we go. So we got little crispy pieces of pancetta here, and then we got bigger hunkaroos that have nice rendered out fat, and they're just starting to pick up a little bit of browning. That's right where I want to stop this, because we have lots of little pieces for crisp, and then we got some big pieces for some meaty chew, you know what I mean? So, now I've killed the heat on that, and per Sawyer's request, we are making spaghetti rigatti which is a ridged spaghetti, which feels interesting. It's in, a, um, it's in a four leaf clover shape, if you look straight down the shaft of it. And uh, let's see what happens here. Um, I do believe in following uh, manufacturer cooking instructions. So this says al dente perfection in six to seven minutes, which means six minutes exactly in my book. Also, I taught this trick in the last episode of um, of uh, basics that, you know, I see so many people just take the box of pasta and just whomp, just dump it into the water. And what does that make happen? It makes pasta fly everywhere. So what do you do? Into your hand like this, let it come out like that, grab it, pull it out. Oh, I lost a piece in there. Okay, so maybe it's not as cool as I thought, but, and then just drop it in like that and then we're not losing anything. Except for the one piece that I dropped, but that's my fault. And we can just fish that out. Boop. Easy as pie. And oh, we still got one in there. That guy can go. He's too small. There we go. And now I've killed the heat on this because we don't want this to be hot. We want it to be a little warm, but we don't want it to be hot at all. We don't want it to be hot enough to cook the eggs. The only thing that is going to cook the eggs is the residual heat from the pasta. That is the key to carbonara because otherwise I've seen so many people post carbonara on Instagram and on socials and all that. I didn't set a timer. I'm gonna do this by, you know, the, the, real, the real way, the real man's way, which is just pull out a piece and eat it. Um, I've seen so many people post carbonara on their socials, on Instagram, on Facebook, uh, and it's, it's clearly chunky, and it's, it's, the eggs have totally scrambled. And that is because you added it while the pan was either too hot or while the pan was still overheat. And I know that's what I did in the binging episode with uh, the, one, the one from Master of None. But that's because I was imitating what Dev was doing on screen. <clears throat> that is my excuse and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> it's true, but it's also, I should have said like, this is, a, this is a bad thing and you shouldn't do it. Here's how to do it right. That's what modern Babish would do. But that was years ago. I was a young man. I, I, made, I made mistakes. Um, and uh, th this is, I've recently become a carbonara wonderkin because I've had to make so much over, over the past. Uh, this is something weird you're going to find out about me is that I love raw pasta. I really do. I used to, whenever my mom made pasta when I was growing up, she would take out pieces for me and be like, is it done? And she meant to give me, you know, pieces that were undercooked and I'd be like, yeah. But I actually really liked it and I'd be like, no, 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 no. No, it's not done. <laughs> and uh, yeah, since then, I like eating raw pasta. Sora will tell you that there have been times that we've been working here when I'm just snacking on a 
a, sti a stick of spaghetti, and I'm just like crunching on it like it, like it's a, like it's a potato chip. Like farmer's hay. Like farmer's hay. That's the. This is this is this is why. This is why you're you're an invaluable member of this organization. Um, because of metaphors like that, or similes, I guess, when you use the word like or as. Um, but, I, you know, my weirdness aside about liking to eat raw pasta or undercooked pasta, uh, it is the best and only way to know if your pasta is cooked properly. The whole throw it against the wall thing, it'll stick it if it's overcooked. So how's that going to help you? <laughs> you know? People right. are curious when you're going to crush that garlic. I literally forgot about it until just now. Thank you very much for saying that, folks. What I'm going to do is I'm going to crank the heat back on here a little bit, just a little bit, because the garlic only needs to cook for about one minute. Because as we know, garlic cooks very quickly. So I'm going to just gonna bring this back up to temperature a little bit. Wow, I almost forgot. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We can rescue this. Don't worry, though. We can rescue it. I'm just going to get this bubbling a little bit. It's already starting to sizzle up again. Worst case, what we're going to do is we'll, we'll take the pasta out and keep it warm in the pot so it doesn't overcook. There we go. In goes the garlic. And this only needs to cook for like not even one minute. It just needs to cook until fragrant, until all that raw garlic bite is gone. There it goes. Whew, that was close. Thank you for saying something. I literally just looked at it and you said it at the same time and I was like, oh shit. I almost forgot. The most important and most controversial ingredient. And we're talking about like boiling fat here. So this, this garlic will overcook in blink of an eye. In fact, I'm already gonna kill the heat. There's plenty of residual heat in this pan to finish cooking this garlic. Ooh, ooh, it burned my eyes real good. Whew, that must be, that must be um, Jesus telling me I'm doing something wrong. Issuing tradition. Sorry, I just said that. Um, here we go. So, garlic's cooking down. It, it's just turning a light summery blonde. That's exactly what we want. We got a lot of fat in the pan, too, and that is one of the unfortunate slash fortunate parts of carbonara, is that it is a, there's a lot of fat in it. It's unfortunate because it's not very good for you. There's nothing good for you about this dish. But it's awesome because it tastes amazing. Uh, let's check on our pasta here. I think we're probably getting very close. Let's see what we got. Mm. Close but no cigar. And see, I'm glad I turned off the heat when I did. Because the garlic is just turning blonde. And I don't want it one iota past that. I want it just to become fragrant and scent the dish. And if we go into brown territory, we're talking burnt garlic. We're talking acrid flavors. But thank you guys for the reminder. Thank you, Jake, for seeing the reminder. I appreciate it. Because, uh, yeah, I almost forgot that. Thank goodness. If it was literally a minute later, we might have been in trouble. But this pasta is not quite done. My only concern about this, about this spaghetti rigatti is that it's very, very thin. And I like a nice, thick, <laughs> robust, robust pasta, but it's still going to be really tasty. Food smells so good. You already you didn't smell it in there? Smell it immediately. Wow. Um, yeah, and that's, that's saying something, folks, because the door's closed, so. Hmm. Oh, I wish the color correction were turned on on these cameras because it really does look gray and washed out over there. All right, uh, while that's finishing, it still the pasta still needs one more minute. I'm just going to get a serving uh, something ready. Should I do a bowl or a plate? What do you think? Let's do a plate. Let's do a plate. Very modern and elegant. Yeah. Go. And then that means I also get to use John Favreau's uh, carving fork from the movie Chef. There it is, folks. I'm over at camera two right now. Sorry. There's the actual carving fork from the movie Chef. 
my most prized possession. People keep asking me, when are you going to get this bronze and framed and whatever? And uh, I got to say, probably never. I've been using it to make pasta, and I think that's, that's where it belongs. It belongs in the kitchen making pasta. Now, I'm willing to bet, that, speaking of which, I'm willing to bet that this pasta is done by now. Oh, it's hot. It's almost there. I'm, I, I love El Dente pasta. I love raw pasta. But I am making this for other people, so I will not, I will not make it like I'm making uh, it for myself. I'm an El Dente boy. You heard him, folks. Here we go. Into the pan it goes. With as much of the pasta water, I see I'm not letting it drip dry or anything. I want lots of pasta water in there. And that's because uh, the pasta water is going to help emulsify and thicken the sauce a little bit. Sometimes the eggs need a little bit of help. There we go. I think that's all of it. I'm probably missing a couple strands in there, but such that's the cost of doing business, folks. And that's the thing with carbonara is you got to move quick because we need to add these eggs as soon as humanly possible because we need the residual heat of the pasta to cook them. Otherwise, we're going to have a very runny sauce. Luckily, we got lots of cheese in here. The things that you can do to um, rescue your carbonara include, but are not, but are not limited to, um, adding pasta water if it's a little bit too thick and if it's becoming a little chunky, maybe. Be careful. Um, and uh, adding uh, more cheese if it's too thin. If it's too thin, if it's not, this is not also, this, I don't know why this is so much smaller than I remember it being last time. Um, let's just try to get this one here. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. That's a kind of banana. There we go. Sorry, I'm becoming nonverbal, folks. In fact, this is actually a little thick, so what I'm going to do is add it smidgen of pasta water, maybe an eighth of a cup. Just something to both thin it out and also just help that sauce emulsify. I don't want scrambled eggs. I don't want, uh, oh yeah, that's looking fabulous. You know, God, it needs more. I don't know what happened with this one. Sometimes they're a little unpredictable, folks, and this one is just that. It is. Um, it is a little thick, and I want it to be a little thinner, a little creamier. Oh, it's looking gorgeous, though. Give They're having a really hard time with that scraping sound. Oh, sorry, folks. It'll be over soon, folks. It's cooking, you know? <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of scraping and cooking, you know? Okay, there we go. That's a nice, a creamier carbonara. Try a bite here. Mm -mm. Yes, sir. Mm. It's great, but it needs salt. And it needs more pasta water. It's still too thick. It's like, it's like sludgy a little bit. Not sludgy, but you know, like gummy, you know? And we can't have that. And I'm going to switch utensils so I'm not bothering you guys with the scraping. I can use some... What do we got here? Have a rubber uh, spatula. While you're searching, I just wanted to reach out to oh, uh, Salty. Uh, we missed his super chat apparently, but he was telling you that you are a meme on Reddit. I think he's referring to the um, presentation slide. And oh, uh, I've been we, seeing that. Yeah, we've seen it. We love it. Yeah, guys, meme away, please, because that, that th those are a lot of fun. I'm very honored to become a meme. It's a it's kind of a rite of passage as a as a personality, and um, I'm happy that I was able to give you guys something that uh, is reminiscent of a meme. Very, very proud, very happy day. So we, we, we're, we're pleased as punch to see that. All right, so got rid of the nasty, scary scraping, so don't worry. Mm. Good choice with the regatta soy. I think this is um, I think it's very nice. Needs more salt. Where'd my salt go? Just a bit more. 
It's going to look like a lot, but there's a lot of pasta here. We're talking about a pound, pound of pasta. So, and I can't believe I'm doing this, but I'm going to add a little bit more pasta water. It really helps emulsify the sauce and thin it out a little bit if it needs it. And this one needs it. I don't know if I did something differently or if those eggs were extra coagulative or what the fuck's going on, but uh, very handy to be able to do that. I just want to jump in here. Um, show your right, gave you 40 bucks. Uh, thank you so hey, much, thank man. You. Sorry we missed it earlier. Uh, he said, very I've been a, fan, been a fan for a while and after having a difficult year and a half, your vid has given me great joy. You've upped my ale oleo game and thank you for well being you. Pre-order the cookbook as well. Really appreciate it, bud. Hope you're feeling a little better. Hanging, chilling, watching the pasta and, um, you know, see you around. Thanks a lot, man. Hey, man. Thank you so much for the very generous super chat, the kind words, and same here. Hope that things are going a little better for you and uh, keep your chin up because it does get better. Um, hmm. All right. We're in business. There's going to be one last final scrape because I'm going to plate this up with the pasta fork. So prepare your scrape ears. Scrape time. Scrape time. Here we go. Oh, sorry. Yeah, back over to camera A. There we go. I'm just going to make a big old nest. There we are. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I can make a secondary one next to it. We'll see. Let's see what happens. Let's see if this looks like one continuous. Oh man, it's up to just you and me to eat this tonight, Jake. Challenge accepted. Yes. Challenge accepted. All right, now I just need a spoon with which to get all this beautiful pork. We don't want to miss any of this wonderful pancetta. There's a lot in there because this, like I mentioned before, this sauce is nice and thick. Way thicker than the other ones that I made when I was on basics. I really don't know what happened differently there. But still don't want to miss any of this pork, especially when we can top it like this. Oh, yeah. That's the stuff. And I got one more bonus to put on top, just to button it up. That's good. That's a nice presentation. And we'll just, uh, boom, hit it with a little, little bit more cheese on top. And a little bit more pepper. It's going to give it both contrast and more flavor. And that's how you do it, folks. That is classic, with the exception of the garlic, classic Italian garbonata, which I'm going to grab some forks so Jake and I can eat. And Jake, you're welcome to come and join me if you like. All right. That's got to be the most beautiful plate of pasta I ever made. I'm very happy with that. Hey, there, you get the burner off. Oh, thanks, folks. God, they're so, they're so, so responsible. They're so Thank safe. you, guys. All right. Let's eat this. This whole thing. All right, mukbang. Mukbang time. Here we go. I got to take my earpiece out because I can hear you still. There we go. Mm. It's a little thick, mm. but it's just so nice. The flavor is so intense. And I love the garlic. I don't care if it's oh, not yeah. traditional. Mmm. 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 <sighs> this is for you guys. Mm. We're eating this whole thing live. All the way down. Maybe not. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> So just now that I'm, I'm hanging here with you, very sexual comments today. Never have I seen any sexual comments the whole time we've done this. Hundreds of sexual comments this time. What's going on with you guys? Why are you so sexual right now? 
real sexual energy in the comments today. The ones that get auto banned mostly. But um, it's teenagers. Curious, yeah. What's up? Teenager, teenagers are exploding hormonally. Randy, Randy group. Randy is, as all get out. Mm. And I, as a as a as a thirty almost thirty two year old man, in a couple weeks, can't st can't stand for it. No, we're long past that. <laughs> mm. All right. I know you think sex is cool, yeah. and it is, but this is cooler. <laughs> and this will get you sex. This is the thing that gets you sex. So the only reason we're not thrown down right now is he's a married man. I'm a married man. And because my girlfriend is probably watching. Sorry, yeah. Jeff. <clears throat> Oh, right, we can't actually eat this whole thing. <laughs> we'll eat the whole thing, yeah. No, no, okay, fine. <laughs> Back in it. Second win. Mm. You made it good. Mm. All right. All right, guys. We'll finish the rest oh, of this off camera. Off camera. Um, thank you guys so much for coming out tonight. I know that... Um, whew, we've got one last super chat here I'm going to read. We got uh, the old 96 dirt from the great outdoors. They'll eat the whole thing. Whole thing with friends. Great content, by the way, from uh, Javen Ray. Thank you very much for the um, super chat. And uh, old 96 dirt, we got to do all the, all the, um, all the uncle, uh, 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 all the John Candy films. So we will do that. Stephen Dutra gave $25 and said, enough to bribe you into doing a McElroy Brothers combination, co collaboration. I don't think I rightly know who the McElroy Brothers are. So, call me an old man because that's what I am. But uh, I actually don't, I literally don't know who they are, so I will look into that. And uh, they sound, just from their name alone, they sound more famous than me. So we'll see if I can convince them, bribe them. Um, hmm. Ah, whew, look how hot I am. There's no AC in here, so I'm like sweating like a dog. Um, Guys, thank you so much for coming and hanging out today. This is a super easy dish so long as you just treat it tenderly and are careful and, uh, and, and, and don't add the eggs too, uh, too soon so the pan is too hot so they scramble. Uh, um, I think I probably added them a little too soon or maybe the pot was picking up some residual heat from the other burner because it's a little thick and I'm thinking it's because uh, the pan was too hot. But happily it hasn't coagulated, it's not like chunky or anything. But it's very, very good. And with a little practice, it could be the best thing in your arsenal. Um, so thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out. Uh, uh, go watch Taylor Swift now. She's probably still going. And uh, uh, thank you, Taylor. Thank you, um, uh, Paul McCartney's daughter, Ste Stella McCartney? Stella McCartney. Stella McCartney. Thank you, Stella. Um, and uh, and uh, thank you guys all for coming and hanging out tonight. Here's to you. We're going to eat this whole thing by ourselves. I promise. <laughs>